Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know by now I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well today we're taking a look at a camera that I recently purchased, which is the Panasonic G100. And here it is. Um, it's a great little compact camera. Now, it's being touted by Panasonic and various other people. In fact, most of the trade has been the ideal vlogging camera. And I guess that's because, uh, lo and behold, do -da -do, you've got the flippy screen and you turn it around and there you go. Ready for your vlogging. Um, it's nice and light. It's not very heavy. Uh, 530 something grams. I put it in the video actually. It might be 400 something. I'm not sure. But it'll be in the video. The, the weight of it. It's really compact. But I think they're not doing justice to what this camera is capable of. I very nearly didn't buy this camera. Simply because um, I already own two ZV-1s. The little Sony vlogging camera ZV-1, which is this one here. Um, I don't do vlogging. I didn't buy it for vlogging purposes. Um, this is uh, one of my ZV-1s. My other ZV-1 is actually filming here, filming all my close-up shots that I use. And I love the ZV-1. Um, so I didn't buy it because um, I wanted to do vlogging. I purchased it because I was looking for the ideal travel camera, the ideal shove in my pocket or in my pouch, and off I go for when we are able to get out and about. Um, and I find the ZV-1 is great for that, but it has two, I say flaws, two things that are not, you know, um, ideal for me. One of them is the fact that it's a one-inch sensor, so I was looking for something a little bit better quality than a one-inch sensor for photographs. Although I'm not knocking the images that come off it because they are really, really good. But I thought, can I get a bit better for something that isn't much bigger? Um, and secondly, I was looking for one with a viewfinder. And this one hasn't got a viewfinder because when you're in bright sunlight, a viewfinder is really handy. Now, this today's video isn't a comparison between the uh, G100 uh, and the ZV-1 because so many people are doing comparisons between these two. I will actually do a comparison just to add my name to the list of comparisons. Um, but I have also got the Sony 5100, which is also awesome. I've got a really, uh, really dinky little lens fitted to that at the moment. And this one's also got, hasn't got a flip out screen, but it's got the tilty uppy screen. Um, and it's nice and compact, nice little grip. Uh, and it's an APS-C sensor. So that's even twice as big as the Micro Four Thirds sensor. Um, but the G100 scores in so many ways over and above the ZV-1 and the 5100. Um, first of all, it has got that Micro Four Third sensor. It's got a 20 megapixel Micro Four Third sensor in here, uh, which is the same sensor apparently that is in the uh, GH5s, which I'm filming. I've got two GH5s I'm filming here. One is getting the close-up shot. One is getting the wider shot, although I am actually filming with a ZV-1 over there as well. Um, but the G100 has got that really nice 20 megapixel micro four third sensor that is, is the same as in the G1 uh, the GH5 and I, uh, the G9 and many other flagship Panasonic cameras. Um, and the other beauty is with the G100 over and above other cameras, it has got uh, interchangeable lenses. So, you know, take the lens off with a wider angle lens on, a telephoto lens, whatever you might like. I've got the 25 mil lens fitted to that at the moment which in full frame terms is equivalent to 50 mil, but it's a 25 mil uh, f1.4, so in full frame that's 50 mil. Um, and it has got the articulating screen, which is great. But what I love is its viewfinder. Um, and so when I'm going out and about, if it's bright sunlight, I can put it up to my eye and, you know, job's done. I don't have to worry about uh, looking at it on the viewfinder. And the other thing that is really nice about the G100 um, is the controls. It's ever so easy to change functions and to get to your different uh, the controls, whether it be aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, video, whatever it might be. And it's basically got your traditional PASM dial on the top here. So you just select whatever mode you want to be in via the PASM dial. Now that to me makes a lot of sense. And it is, you know, fantastic that it has got that. Um, so, you know, when, when I'm out and about, 
I don't really take a lot of video, to be honest. I'm predominantly taking photographs, and I generally keep it in absolute priority. Um, but at least with this now, I can switch between the modes, and it's got a custom mode, and it's got an SNQ mode for fast motion video, slow motion video. Um, so I think it has got a lot more to offer than just being a vlogging camera. I think it's a great, great travel camera. You've also got on the top here a, a wheel for adjusting your um, aperture if you're in aperture priority, your shutter speed if you're in shutter priority um, on the top there. And it's also got another wheel on the back here, uh, which again is fairly traditional. To be fair, I think Panasonic have crammed a lot into a very compact body at a very, very good price point. I mean, a really, really good price point. It's actually cheaper than the uh, Sony ZV-1. And that's got a fixed lens. This one, you can interchange the lenses. Um, and it's got function buttons you can pre-assign to whatever you want to set them for. Um, I think I've got that one set to its quick menu, which is... Um, so if we if we do that then the quick menu should come up which it does and you can go through um you know with various functions using this here and that'll take you through the various functions uh, of a camera that you've pre-set up on the quick menu um and i've got the other one this one here i've got set up for setting audio levels because it has got manual audio control on here so you can see how it's set up to minus six at the moment, but you can set that to what you want. Um, it's got a microphone jack, which is what I would use. Um, and I would plug in my Rode Wireless Go because you just plug it into the side here. Uh, the mic jack's on this side. Just there. So you've got a mic jack on the side here. Uh, you can set your audio levels manually, plug a microphone in, and away you go. And at the moment, I've got my... Uh, Saramonic Blink 500 microphone uh, plugged in and that's going into my Sony A7C so um, you can use the tie clip mic or you can use its built-in mics now it's got this Nokia Ozo um, I mean it's what it's called Nokia Ozo um, microphone system so I, I, I mean you know I don't know if that's a sales gimmick I don't know um, you know how good it is but basically um, it's got surround sound and it's got microphones in the front of the camera and at the back of the camera. And you can set it to follow the sound around you. Um, it's got all sorts of fancy sound features. I'm not going to go into detail with that because I think it's a gimmick. But, um, you know, hey-ho, um, what am I to say? Um, but apparently it does improve the sound. I've, I've always used external microphones wherever possible. But I am going to do a, a vlog um, out in the garden. Uh, so you can actually see and hear how good this camera is. It hasn't got uh, IBIS, which it, A, it wouldn't have because of the size of the camera, and B, uh, the cost. But it has got electronic image stabilisation, which I will turn on. So um, now let's go outside and have a look at what uh, the sound quality, is, sound and video quality is like using the G100 with its built-in microphones. I'm just doing a quick vlogging test on the Panasonic G100, as I said I would, and I'm actually got this set in full HD. Uh, that's purely because it crops really tight in 4K, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So this is how good the image looks. It's in shutter priority, so um, you know, letting the camera really adjust the aperture and the auto ISO as well, which makes sense uh, for vlogging. You don't want to be mucking around with manual settings. Well, I don't think you do anyway. Um, I think the face detect should be working fine. Uh, I don't see no reason why it wouldn't be. Um, and the great thing, it's got a really bright screen, which you can see in daylight. You can clearly see the audio levels. I've got the audio set to front facing and to automatic. Again, I didn't want to muck around with the audio. And I thought it was fair to use the built-in mics as opposed to using an external microphone. And as I said, it has got a, a microphone jack. I would normally use like a tie clip microphone, some sort of radio mic. Uh, gives better sound, but this does a job. And I also like the big red uh, recording indicator that goes around the screen. So, um, and you know, full HD is completely fine for YouTube. I don't think you need to be worrying about 4K for YouTube at all. Um, now I said on this camera, it crops it a bit tight. 
I've got the Olympus 14 to 42 lens on, which is equivalent to 28 to 84, and that it's at its widest. So um, that isn't very wide. I've got my armor at full length. So you really do need a wider lens. And that's another great thing with this kit. You can put different lenses on. You can put something like the Panasonic 7 to 14 on. Uh, that would give you a 14 to 28, which would be the ideal vlogging lens. It's a bit bulkier. Um, and it'd be a wee bit heavier but uh, I think the G100 does make you know a really good vlogging camera I've now switched it over to 4k I actually had the last clip in manual exposure I did say it was in shutter priority it wasn't it was in manual exposure this is now in shutter priority I'm shooting in 4k and you can see it's it's a tighter shot so um, you can't see much of the surroundings at all just a really real close-up of my face and I have got my arm at full extension um, so yeah I would still suggest shooting uh, HD uh, when you're vlogging um, if you I mean obviously you can shoot in 4k if you've got it on a tripod and the camera's further away from you then certainly use 4k uh, but if you're actually going to be walking and talking um, you're best off using uh, HD I've got it in standard stabilization uh, so I haven't got any sort of boost stabilization on um, cats have just gone chasing a bird <laughs> um, so yeah it's um, you know a very very nice uh, vlogging uh, vlogging camera so there we go that's what the you know vlogging standard of this camera is like now I'm not a vlogger so you have to take into account that I'm not a vlogger uh, so you know uh, take it as it is but at least you'll be able to hear what the sound quality is like and what the video quality is like. Uh, it uses depth from defocus uh, uh, autofocus. It hasn't got phase detect autofocus points on this camera, uh, which is a pity. Uh, the ZV-1 has got amazing autofocus because it's got phase detect autofocus as well as um, uh, contrast detect autofocus. That's on the ZV-1. Um, but I find uh, for video, and I've used this a few times for video, the autofocus in video I think is fine. You know, um, it does what it says it will do. Uh, you have got a 10 minute record limit in 4K though. Again, that's disappointing. Uh, again, uh, for vlogging though, who cares? Because you're not going to be vlogging really for 10 minutes. You can stop and start. But I need, when I'm in the studio here, uh, cameras that will run for a lot longer than 10 minutes. I love the GH5s and the A7C, the 6600, the ZV-1, whatever, uh, because they've got unlimited record time. So if I keep making fluffs, I don't have to keep stopping the cameras and starting again. I can just let it run and then sort that out when I edit it. So... This would be useless in the studio here, and I wouldn't use it in the studio um, purely because of that record limit. In 1080, though, it's got a 30-minute record limit, so that's a bit more flexible. Uh, and the 1080 quality that comes off this camera is completely fine. Uh, so um, as far as video is concerned, it's, it's a pretty high-spec video. It's got all the features, well, a lot of the features that the GH5 and the G9 has. So it has got your... Uh, focus features what do they call it 4k cropping uh, so you can do um, I, I do a video on 4k cropping there's quite a few videos online of it uh, about it as it is um, and it's got various other features I do like the audio level display you can actually see clearly see the audio levels now it hasn't got a headphone jack so you can plug a microphone in, but you can't monitor the audio. So it is nice. You can at least see there is audio going down onto the camera. Whether it's the audio that you want, because you can't tell if there's noise or buzzing in that audio, but at least you've got an audio indicator. And the other great thing is, which um, I did think it was a gimmick, but actually the more I use it, the more it isn't a gimmick. Um, when you're doing, again, getting back to vlogging, because it is a vlogging camera, uh, it's sometimes quite awkward getting to this record, any of the record buttons on any of the cameras, but record buttons just on the top there, and that can be, you know, a bit of a pain. But what it has got, you just tap the tap the, the monitor, and then it starts filming. Oh, that's taken a photograph, because I'm in photo mode, so that's great. So uh, the selfie mode works in photographs, I've just discovered, as well as in video. So when you turn it to video, let me show you. Uh, turn that to video. So I don't know what, we, what camera can we see? We can see it on that one. So um, so you can see now I'm in uh, video mode. 
So if I imagine if this is facing me and I tap that, tap, tap that, tap that, that'll count down and then start filming. And there you go, look at that. And you get the red, uh, it hasn't got a tally light per se, but it's got a red, a big red square that goes around the monitor so you can actually see that it is filming. And that is great. And then you just tap it to stop. And that's just stopped. So um, it's got good face, oh, it hasn't stopped. There we go, that's stopped now. Um, it's got good quality face detect, ain't gonna work with this lens, because that's a 50, equivalent to a 50 mil lens. That's a really bad lens to demonstrate this with. Um, but uh, you can see, you know, in principle how that would work. But the great thing is, because it has got interchangeable lenses, you know, I've got a little lens here, which is what I keep it packed away with when I've got it in my pouch. It's actually an Olympus lens. And that's a good thing with Micro Four Thirds. There's such a wide variety of lenses from Olympus, Panasonic, Sigma. Um, I'm not sure Tamron, I think Tamron do. Um, and, you know, they're really good value. Not all of them, not the real expensive ones, but um, real expensive ones, because they wouldn't be good value, would they? You know what I mean? Um, so now look how much more compact that is. You know, that is awesome, isn't it? Nice compact camera, easily fits in one of my pouches. I've got hundreds of pouches here, right? So when I keep it in, that'll easily fit in this pouch. Um, I use it a lot, just keep that on my belt, um, and that's great. So, um, again, this is the ideal lens for me for vlogging. Yeah, it's a 14 to 42 lens. I think the Panasonic is 12 to 32. I'm not sure. This is the Olympus version. And that's fine for vlogging. I can handle that, no problem at all. But as I say, I don't do vlogging. I use this as a high quality or good quality um, camera for when I'm out and about, mainly for taking photographs. So, um, you know, Micro Four Thirds, 20 megapixel sensor is going to be far better than you get off your mobile phone. Far, far better. Um, it has got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth transfer to your mobile, and I find the Panasonic app is pretty damn good. It's better than most of them, and it's pretty reliable. So um, you can very fairly quickly transfer images off your phone to your mobile phone, uh, off your phone, off your camera to your mobile phone for uploading to you know Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever takes your fancy. Um, so you know, a great, great little camera. Um, I will put a, a link to the uh, a, li a link to my Flickr page in the description below, so you can actually see images that I have taken with the G100 using various lenses, and uh, I think you'll find they're really, really good. I'd rather do it that way than put vi put images uh, in this video because uh, YouTube really do compress them, and you don't get you know to see what the real image quality is like. So I feel it's much better put a link in the description, then you can go straight to my Flickr page and see what the images really are like uh, uh, off Flickr, rather than seeing them on this uh, YouTube video. Um, and so there we go, you know, multi-purpose camera. Uh, this is, let's say, just an introduction. There will be, you know, more videos about this camera, and I will be doing a comparison between this and the ZV-1, because uh, that's what everyone is comparing it with. But um, yeah, great, you know, a nice grip, nice handling. The battery um, BLG10 or something like that is called, uh, standard sort of size uh, battery. Um, I'm not sure what the SEPA rating is, probably around about 300 images uh, you get off that battery. Um, I've put that in the uh, video as to, you know, what the um, uh, SEPA rating is of that battery. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure what else I can say about it. Um, we all know, as I said, it's got, I've showed up many times, the articulating screen, which is great. Um, what's nice also about these articulating screens, the same as on the uh, ZV-1, is that, and not many people mention this actually, with cameras that have just got the tilty wilty screen, there's no way of protecting the screen when you put it in the bag. But at least with these articulating screens, it's a big bonus for... Um, you don't have to have it like that, leaving the screen exposed to scratches and damage in your bag. You can turn it around that way. And that's how you store it, you know, so totally protected. I mean, it's, uh, you know, they, they all do it. It's not just this particular model, um, but very useful with the articulating screen. Um, 
and as I say, a nice, comfortable camera to use. It's not too small, but it's small enough to be able to be with you all the time. And for me, that is awesome and a very lightweight. So there we go. That's an introduction of its video features. Um, I will say as far as video, in 4K, it does crop it. Uh, so it doesn't use a full width of a sensor in 4K. In 1080, it does. Uh, but in 4K, you get a cropped image in 4K. Uh, so not uh, that's not as good as the ZV-1. ZV-1, it doesn't crop. But um, again, I find I've got this set to 4K, I think. Um, let me just see. Yeah, that's set to 4K. And if you've got the right lens, again, this is what you can do with this camera. You can put a wider lens on. Uh, that That is fine. It's a bit tight, but it's it's manageable. Um, or you switch to 1080. I mean, uh, for YouTube content, particularly vlogging content, 1080 is completely and utterly fine. I upload all my content in 1080. I film it in 4K for uh, flexibility in the edit. But um, I edit it in 4K, you know. Um, uh, sorry, I, I upload it. In, I, I edit it in 4K, but upload it in 1080. So um, there we go. That's the Panasonic introductions of a Panasonic G100, and uh, you know, highly recommend it. It's a great, great little camera, and the autofocus isn't as bad as what some of the reviewers are saying. It is well, I found it isn't as bad as what some of the reviewers uh, seem to suggest that it is. So there we go. Just my pure. All of these are my opinions. Obviously, you know, um, I'm not being paid to make these videos. I buy all the kit myself. So I'm not being sponsored by anyone. Um, so these are all my genuine thoughts. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And hit the like button. If you like the content of this video and you, you have found it useful, that is great. And it really motivates me to do these when I get the comments and all the positive comments in the uh, you know um, uh, description below. Description below, is that where the comments are? You know what I mean. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography and audio. Cheers for now. Bye.